Are you engaged in acts of worship, yet don't feel the benefit of such actions? Do you find your mind busy catching up with demands and expectations of your religion to the extent that you have lost connection to your heart? Do you feel depressed and find it hard to leave things to a divine entity? Chances are you are among the majority that has forgotten an important aspect of our being. This majority suffers from a state of insatiable spiritual thirst that longs to be fulfilled. That forgotten aspect of our being is part of the bigger, holistic picture that explains who we are, what's our topmost priority in life, and what is missing from our definition of success. And without understanding this holistic picture, this bigger picture, uh, we always talk about different components, but the problem is that then we don't understand the interrelationship between those, those elements. For Muslims, it is important to understand all parts of this intimately interconnected holistic picture of Islam because without it, we remain ignorant of our responsibilities as Muslims. If I had known this bigger picture, I might have adopted a totally different approach in life to different situations and different things, right? But I couldn't do that because uh, I just couldn't understand the context of each of these little components in this bigger picture. And if you, if you don't understand the, in the, the position or the interrelationship between these different components, then it's very difficult for you to practice or to adopt a particular approach to life when you face those kinds of situations, right? So that's why it's, that's why it's important for Muslims from that perspective. For non-Muslims, understanding the holistic picture of Islam is important because there have been organized efforts to present Islam as a dark force, which has a combination of malevolent leaders, brainwashed followers, and a poisonous belief system the fundamentals of which teach hate and violence. So these are the fundamentals of Islam. Let's see if there's any negativity in here. Or is it something that this, this is actually leading them to the total opposite of what's being presented in the media, in the movies, etc., right, in the research? What we would do is that I'll give you a quick overview of, of these elements, and then we'll, we'll dive deeper into different areas to understand uh, how they, they, they work and how they are interrelated, right? To understand Islam's holistic picture, we can begin with why Islam and what's the purpose of our lives. However, there is no universally agreed common purpose of life. We need to begin with what's actually common amongst all human beings. Uh, what is common? What do we all want from your perspective? What do we all aspire to have? What do we all want to achieve in our life? Materialistic goals. So mostly, all of us believe that we have a standard of success, right? As much as uh, material content we have, material possession that we have, we think that we are successful in life, right? So, so that's one thing that's common, right? What's another thing that's common among all of us? Another thing that's common among all the human beings is that no one is perfectly contented and happy in the sense that, okay, now I'm contented, whatever I have, I have, right? Uh, there, there are things which are keeping you awake at night, uh, things which bother you, right? And, and that's exactly what the Quran tells us. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ We have certainly created human being into hardship. This is a universal law. Every man shall have difficulties. No one will be free of them. Poor people will suffer. Rich people will suffer. Weak people suffer. Healthy ones suffer. Illiterate suffer. Educated suffer. Men suffer. Women suffer. Innocent suffer. Criminals suffer. Muslims suffer, non-Muslims suffer, beautiful ones suffer, ugly suffer. The point is that there is no escape from troubles. The common element among all of us is pain and hardship. So this is how we have been created and, and so, so 